Hey, how's it going, YouTube? How y'all doing today? I was taking a look at the grass this morning, taking a good look at the grass everywhere this morning. The grass on this back pasture, well, let's go take a look at it, huh? Grass on this back pasture, I mean, it's doing okay. I would say uh, across the pasture, it's probably uh, uh, somewhere between uh, six to 10 inches tall across the field. If you wanna take a close look at it. And I mean, oh, well, like this right here. I mean, maybe, uh, well, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard to tell where this uh, blade of grass begins, but there's plenty of grass on the field. It ain't growing in real fast. I would say maybe I'm getting a uh, three to four inches of growth on it a week. If the weather's real good, if I get a lot of rain, I cut my hand this morning. <laughs> If I get a lot of rain on it, if I get a lot of rain on it, uh, it grows maybe a three, four inches a week. And so it ain't bad. Uh, well, I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Uh, they say uh, starting the uh, the first of May or about about the, the beginning of May, or, uh, we're supposed to get a lot of rain. The spring showers are supposed to really start rolling in. And so uh, it's going to be a little bit warm too. But if it's a little warm and there's a lot of water on the field, the grass will still do okay. This is a, a cool season grass. This annual uh, hybrid ryegrass, it's a cool season grass. So it's made to grow when it's cool outside. But it, it, even if it's warm outside, if there's a lot of water on the ground, if there's a lot of water running through the plant, that plant will still do okay even if it's a bit, even if it's a bit too hot for it. And so uh, it'll be okay because it, it like um, the 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 way to think about it, I think, is that there are uh, many uh, many different factors to temperature. If they're um, like um, if it's 80 degrees outside, but I'm standing outside for a long period of time, let's say let's say let's say it's 80 degrees outside and it's real sunny, and I'm standing outside for a long time. Uh, as I stand out there, the hotter it will feel like it is getting. Uh, it, granted that there is very minimal wind. If I'm just standing outside for a long time, it'll feel like it's getting hotter because the sun is heating me up. And it's the same thing with the grass. Even if it's it, like, let's say the, the, the grass, it, 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 uh, it turns 80 degrees. And at, on the first hour, the surface temperature of the grass is like, uh, is like 60. And then it starts slowly heating up. It'll, uh, if the grass stops growing at 85 uh, and it's 80 degrees outside and it's real sunny, after a few hours, the, the grass will have heated up to a point where it will stop growing, even though it's only 80 degrees outside. Just because the, 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 the temperature, the sun is heating it up constantly throughout the day. And so it's like, this, it's, it's a dynamic thing. Temperature isn't just like a one fixed number it's like uh as the as the day progresses and as the um depending on the uh the, the climate depending on the 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 uh, different factors for the day the uh, the temperature will be affected and so if it's real sunny outside all day and it's 80 degrees in terms of just uh, like the weather temperature progressively throughout that day as the grass sits out in the sun it will get it will get warm the, the the grass itself will get warmer and warmer and warmer and so uh when it's like 80 degrees outside and it's real hot or it ain't real hot but when it's 80 degrees outside and it's real sunny the 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 warm the cool season grasses will start to slow down they'll start to the to grow slower and they'll uh so yep, uh, but w w if if I get you know uh, three to four days of rain on it next week, even if it's in the mid 80s, the grass will grow. I mean, I'll probably get three to four inches of growth on it a week. And so the cattle have more than enough grass to eat. Uh, they're 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 putting on some good weight. I'm starting to see some good weight coming on in these cattle. They starting to I I, I need them to to really kind of uh. Well, it's gonna take me, I, I would estimate that it's going, I got about two and a half months left with these cattle and it's gonna take me all two and a half months to uh, to get these animals uh, kind of looking a little bit uh, plump. 
and so uh, like uh, they're, they're at a decent weight to go to market but I want them to look a little bit plump before they go to market and I think that well I mean these cattle they my pride and joy right they they the reason uh, the one of my big reasons for uh for being happy to wake up in the morning and get to it and you know um if I didn't have this farm I don't think I'd be working you know I don't think I would be uh working uh like this I, I don't I don't think I'd be working seven days a week I, I mean, I just don't have a reason to do that unless, uh, well, I mean, uh, but my big reason for doing that is because is because of these cattle, right? I, I love, I love, I love my cattle. I love my farm. This is my pride and joy. And so, uh, yep. I want them to be a I want them to look good when they go to market. And they got plenty of grass on the field right now. The grass is um here pretty soon. Well, I mean, now that I actually take a close, close look at it, it's probably closer to four to six inches. But by next week, this grass will be a uh, six, six to eight is what I'd be guessing. Is what I would be anticipating. It ain't a guess. It's a, it's a, it's a calculated anticipation. <laughs> this is a good looking animal right here. But uh, I was looking at everything for the year, and uh, this year, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in heifers. And my, my major reason for bringing in heifers is because I, um. From from just I, I looked through I I looked through a a bunch of sales sheets and to see uh how these animals are uh, are going at or are going in market. I actually have an opportunity to buy uh like if I wanted to I I could buy a uh, a few dozen black Angus heifers from a uh, a local ranch. They're about uh, about an hour and a half two hours away. And they got them. Uh, they they uh, 3.5 weight, and they want two dollars a pound for them. And if I was really looking to, I, I could go buy them. But uh, well, I mean, there's there's always opportunities like that. Um, if I was if I was willing to pay uh, two dollars a pound, I could I, I I could pretty much buy any heifer on the market. Uh, for for that much money. And but my big reason for for looking at heifers right now is um, the the reason I want to buy heifers is because their 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 price tends to hold steadier across the higher weights. Steers, they may gain more quickly, they may gain more efficiently, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but their uh their their price tends to take a significant drop at the higher weights. So like a a a, a, a number one steer, a number one uh. A number one 2.5 weight steer may go for like 265, 270 a pound, but um, a, a a a seven weight steer, 7.5 weight steer, they tend to go for about right now in the market. They tend to go for about a dollar seventy, dollar eighty, and these heifers, they uh, a 2.5 weight heifer tends to go for about a two point or about about two dollars a pound two to two ten to two dollars a pound to two dollars ten cents a pound and when they get up to a uh, seven weight they're there they tend to be at about that dollar seventy as well so their their price holds steadier at the higher weights and so i'm 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 i'm, I'm more leaning towards bringing me in a, a lot of heifers and uh, i've been taking good inventory on my grass throughout this year and if i was going to graze this much grass if I was gonna grain feed these cattle as well as graze grass, um, I would need something closer to probably 60 animals. If I was going to, like this grass right here, it's growing in too fast. So th these animals, they're not gonna be able to eat all of it before it goes to seed. And and when it goes to seed, the quality of the grass will drop. So I'll either need to cut it or uh, I'll need to plow it under and then, uh, and then reseed it because if, if the grass goes to seed the quality of the grass goes too low and i mean these animals right now uh, well i still got some real small animals um like this one is my smallest one right here and so i still got some real small animals so i, I still do need some high quality grass but if the, if the quality of the grass drops right now it, it ain't it ain't that huge of a deal because these animals are at a large enough size to where they can consume enough volume of food to get the uh, vitamins that they need so even if the quality of their feed is a bit lower uh substantially lower these animals will still uh will still grow on it they'll, they'll still uh, put on weight on it as long as i continue to feed them grain and so yep the other uh, grass is doing good uh we can go take a look at the sudan grass but this is what i meant by the sudan grass when when it um 
but uh, this is why I would like to get a, a flatter field. So we can go take a look at the Sudan grass. And this is why I would say uh, I, I, I reduced my uh, my own grading from about a, a, a 95 to an 80. And this is why I, I got I got I got a huge opportunity for improvement here. And the uh, the the big opportunity for improvement here is to get rid of these little little uh, shallow spots. You can see actually see I don't know if it shows up on camera where I reseeded it. But there are a few uh, you, th those little red specks. Those are uh, I'm trying not to step on my seat, but um those little red specks are the, are the are the spots that I broadcast the seat back over, and and uh, these little uh, th these huge wet spots right here. This is where you can actually see that the the soil moved, and you can see that there is some germination of seed in there. There's a little bit of germination of seed in there, but the uh, the water uh, washed the seed away. The water either washed the seed away or it drowned the seed. And so anywhere that there are these big wet spots like this where the water was obvious, where, where the water was showing signs of moving through the field, it um it washed the seed away. And so here's another one right here. See, you, you can see that there is some germination in there. But this when I when I when I'm looking for germination, I'm looking for like something like this. You see how how this is just real, 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 real just even germination across the field and the plants are evenly spaced and everything looks looks uh spot on just just this is what i'm looking for and so anywhere that i'm trying not to step on my fir my first row here but anywhere that there's a a major uh dip in the it's not even a major dip but even if it's a slight dip like this just e even if the dip is like that 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 um uh, I guess like that, uh, that much further into the ground than, than the soil around it. The water, well, like when we get three, two, three inches of rain, there is just such a, a tremendous sum of water that it, it will fill that, if, if the dip is that big, it will just fill that dip with water, just completely fill it with water. And then the water will start uh, moving. Uh, the water will start moving downhill. And then it'll wash all my seed away. And if it doesn't wash the seed away, it'll actually drown that portion of the field because there's just so much standing water there. And so um, I need to, uh, well, I was thinking about yesterday, I was really thinking about, you know, what, what am I going to buy? Like if I was going to buy something and if I was gonna buy one thing, what would I buy? And I think right now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a pull type cultivator with a roller or a, uh, a harrow on it. But the harrow has to be one of them. Uh, the harrows that got the little uh, th there's a it's like it's like a flat piece of a uh, square tubing, but it's got little teeth that stick into the ground like that. Um, it's got a whole bunch of things that that's, uh, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's got a whole bunch of teeth that stick into the ground like that. And so it's not like a chain. It's not like a chain harrow and it's not like a. Uh, and it's not like a roller, but it's a whole bunch of teeth that just stick into the ground like that. And and uh, the cultipacker, I thought about it and I was like a cultipacker, a hydraulically powered cultipacker, it wouldn't really do anything. Because if I had a hydraulically uh, powered cultipacker, right? Let's say I got, the, I got that cultipacker and I was running it and I dropped it into the ground. If I dropped it into the ground and, and let's say I was going this way, right? Let's say I was driving. If, if I if I drop that colt packer into the ground and I drove forward that colt packer it, it would um, it would uh, smooth out the surface but anytime it went into a dip that colt packer would just roll into the dip and so if anything it would make my problem worse and so you know a, a colt packer uh, I thought about it I was like I, the colt packer is not going to help me get rid of the dips uh, I need something, if I'm going to get rid of the dips in my soil, I need something that will physically push the soil and then level it. Because I don't need something that's just going to roll over the top of it. Because if I roll over the top of it, imagine like, I guess like a, to make the, to make the, uh, to make the, uh, the, uh, the illustration more, um, more visual. Imagine a big hill. If I went over the hill with a cultipacker, it would just roll over the hill but if i was going to um if i was going to try and flatten that hill out the first thing i would need to do is i would need to start pushing that hill I, I, I would need to push that hill and then i would need to flatten it as i pushed it and so i need something that i can uh push 
and flatten at the same time. I know it's hard to see the uh, the Sudan grass, but let me get up closer to it. But you know, I got I got I got about a I would say it's about 80% germination. And anywhere I got a bare spot, I reseeded it. But you can see the bare spots are happening where there's a a lot of water on the on on the the is the the bare spots are still wet. And the bare spots are still wet because these um well, it's because this uh the, it's because of the water's been pooling in the dips and so uh the sudan grass right now i would say is probably growing um maybe about uh an inch every uh maybe every three days or so so the sudan grass is growing and and the germination that i would get th this is about all the germination that i would get and so i reseeded it uh a, a few days ago and i reseeded the uh the, the bare spots but but right now uh and, and the reason okay so um when when looking at a tractor implement there are a few major ways to connect a uh, uh, uh an implement to the tractor there's something called a pull type and then there's something called a three point and the thing that i found about a three point implement is that a three point implement it um if if my if my field is is not level like if my field man i got a lot of grass up here i, I but uh i can't do anything with this grass because if i let the cattle up here to graze it they're gonna stomp on my sudan grass and so but uh yep i mean it's whatever i got a lot of grass on the back too on the back field but uh if i have a field that's not level like let's say um like let's say I got a field that's just not level for whatever reason it's not level. Let's say there's an incline to the field. Let's say the the the, the property is is on some hills or whatever. If I got a field that's not level and I try and pull a uh, actually I got an implement to to show uh, to 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 show y'all this with what I mean. And so if I got a three point hitch implement, so this is what I mean by a three point hitch implement. this right here if i got something like this if i got something like this right here where it connects via a three point right here and it's got a set of discs in the front and a set of discs in the back this thing uh the the uh the tilt of the of the of the of the drill or the, excuse me the tilt of the uh, the disc is dependent on the length of the uh the top link and so I can adjust the tilt of this disc by shortening or lengthening the, the top link. And so if I'm going down a hill and I need the back to be raised up a little bit so that the disc runs down the hill, I need to adjust the length of the top link. Or if I run it flat, if, if I go on a piece of level ground and, I, and then I put this on my tractor so that it's level with the ground, if I go down that hill the um the the disc will not hit the ground properly the disc uh, the, the front portion of the disc will be held off the ground by the top link and so uh but the uh and so when uh when when operating a piece of equipment that has a uh, a front set and a back set it has multiple points of contact if i need it um if i'm working on an uneven piece of surface or an uneven piece of land the, the the piece of equipment is not a good idea and so where a three-point hitch is a good idea in terms of uh in terms of uh pulling equipment is something like this where it's only got one one uh one point of contact and it's right here in a straight line so th there ain't anything on the front to, to contact the ground with and so if i'm just going across the ground the only thing that can hit the ground is this um, because on that disc if i was going down a hill the back would uh the, the back would hit the ground but the back hitting the ground going down the hill would keep the front off the ground and so it ain't gonna work well it ain't it ain't gonna work and so uh when running a, a piece of uh, equipment that that needs to contact the, the ground surface if I have one point of contact, that is good for a three-point hitch. If I if I was and, and if I'm on an uneven surface, if I'm on a, a flat even surface, a relatively flat even surface, I could have ten points of contact and it wouldn't even matter because the the field is relatively flat. There's nothing that's going to hold the, the 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 piece of equipment off the ground, and I won't have to constantly readjust the top link.
And so, uh, but with something like this, it's perfectly fine to attach it to a three-point hitch. Now, the, the solution to this is, uh, see right here on, on this tractor, there, there's this, there's this, uh, I actually pulled the bar out of here because uh, it was hitting the, it, it was looking like it was going to hit the plow. But there's a bar that goes in here, and it's like a tow bar. And I can, um, I can actually connect a, uh, I can actually, it's called a pull type implement. And if I get a pull type implement, that saw, uh, the pull type implement comes with a hydraulic cylinder. So instead of, uh, engaging the, uh, in, instead of engaging the, the, the soil by hitting the soil, the hydraulic cylinder will push the, the implement into the ground to, 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 to contact the ground surface. And so if I have a pull type implement, I can, I can be on anything. I can be on a hill. I can be on a, I can be on anything. And, and the moment I engage that hydraulic cylinder, the implement will be pushed into the ground via the hydraulic. And so what I'm looking for, but here's the thing is that a, uh, is a hydraulic type implement will be significantly more or a pull type implement will be significantly more expensive than a, uh, a three point implement in general like this right here this cost me five hundred dollars if i was gonna buy a pull type implement it would cost me about um i could be spending anywhere from two thousand to five thousand dollars for a proper piece of uh, of a uh, pull type for a proper uh, pull type implement and so even if i'm gonna spend more money i would like to make sure i get the thing done correctly on the first try and so i don't have to constantly buy new implements and so I was thinking about this and I was like, you know what, if I was going to solve my problem, a roller wouldn't solve my problem. A Colta Packer wouldn't solve my problem. The, uh, the arena drag, the arena drag that I'm looking at does have a set of rippers on the front of it. And so it would physically push the soil. And so that may solve my problem. I'm going to have to call the company and make sure that I can uh, run that, uh, run that arena drag on a clay soil because if they say that it is built to run on clay soil maybe th that that would that would solve my problem too that arena drag would solve my problem too and uh but other than that a a cultivator with a with a uh with some kind of uh, I, I don't know exactly i think it's called a drag harrow but it, it's a it's a, it's like a it's like a flat piece of metal it ain't like a chain and it ain't like a roller. It's like a flat piece of metal that's got teeth that stick directly into the ground. And um, if I had something like that with a cultivator on it, I would figure that if I drove the cultivator over the surface, the cultivator, the, the cultivator heads would rip the soil apart and then the teeth on the drag would, would grab onto the soil and push it uh, into the uneven spots. And so I was like, you know what? Maybe a cultivator with a drag on it maybe uh, may, i'm i'm pretty sure it's called the drag but that may be a solution to my problem but i'm gonna call the company for the arena drag and ask them hey man if i bought your uh it, it, it's like their top of the line uh arena drag and it's gonna cost me like five grand i said and i'm gonna tell them hey you know i'm looking into investing about five thousand dollars into one of your pieces of equipment i want to make sure it works before i buy it because if i buy it and it doesn't work that is a huge problem I mean, I mean that that's five thousand dollars just gone, and so I'm gonna have I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna ask them first, and if they say yes, you can run it on a piece of clay soil or on a field of clay soil, then uh, I'm gonna do it. But the uh, the sorghum Sudan grass is coming in very, very, very well. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I'll zoom in. It's just anywhere that there's a ditch, anywhere that there's a little bit of an uneven piece of land, that there's a, a little bit of a uh, 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 dip in the dirt uh, the, the water pooled and so the, the, the germination on those spots is very low and um, and I've actually have uh, portions of the field have actually drowned as well and so I've got portions of the field that just haven't, uh, haven't germinated at all because the seeds have drowned but other than that, everything went extremely well. I just got to solve this problem, right? It ain't a big problem either. I would say um, I overseeded it. I went over it with a hand seeder and I put seed on the top of it. So by the time it rains again, um, the, the those uh, bare spots should start uh, filling in pretty decently. And so I would say I got about a, I got, I did about 90% uh, when, when considering the overseeding as well, I did about 90% of it very well. 
Um, I still do have a lot of room for improvement. I just got to find the right piece of equipment. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.